block and a loop. A small block with a mass of 350 grams, so right away we have an issue, right? We have to convert that to kilograms, starts from rest at the top of an incline. It slides without friction down the incline, around the inside of the loop, and then continues on. The height of the incline is 110 centimeters. Oh, there's another conversion, and the radius of the loop is here. That's another conversion. Find the initial potential energy of the block, find the velocity of the block at the bottom of the loop, then find it at the top of the loop, and then what is the normal force on the block at the bottom of the loop, and then at the top of the loop. The initial potential energy is when the block is at the top of the incline. Since it is at rest, all of the energy is GPE. There's no kinetic energy, there's no elastic potential energy. So we'll want to use the GPE equation, which is equal to MGH. Now our problem here gave us grams and centimeters. So we use unit conversion here, 350 grams times one kilogram over a thousand grams, and it's called unit conversion because this thing here is equal to one, it's a unit. And we get 0.350 kilograms. For centimeters, there's one meter has a hundred centimeters. Think of it in a century, which sounds like centimeter. It's a hundred years in a century, same thing. And there's other ways to remember it, but that's how I always do it. You multiply through and you get a GPE of 3.77 joules. Find the velocity of the block at the bottom of the loop. We're going to use conservation of energy for these problems. There are no external forces acting on the block. An external force would be friction. We don't have any friction here, so we can use conservation of energy. At the top of the track, all of the energy is in the form of GPE. So E0 will be GPE. At the bottom of the track, which we've arbitrarily set, GP is equal to zero. And the GP above will be, of course, MGH, where H is the height above that point. So all the energy at the bottom is kinetic energy. So here's our work energy equation. E0 plus work is final energy. We're leading up to the conservation of energy. Work we've just said is zero. There's no external forces doing work. So the initial energy is GPE, work is zero, E final is KE, so what do we have? GPE equals KE. We then substitute in the equations, and MGH is equal to one half MV squared. Now why don't we just say one half MV squared is equal to the GPE we found on the previous slide? Well, we could do that, but we've already calculated that and rounded off, so we'd like to be a little more exact. And what's cool about this one here? When you set this equation, M's go away. Okay, they cancel, so it's a very simple expression. Here's our equation, and look at that. Mass doesn't matter for the velocity. We divide it right out. So we get this, then we switch sides because we're solving for velocity. Then we'll multiply both sides by two, and then finally take the square root. And you get this really neat little equation. The velocity is a square root of two times the gravitational acceleration times the height. Put in the numbers, and the velocity at the bottom is 4.64 meters per second. Now we need the velocity at the top of the loop. So when we started, the block only has a height. It's not moving. When it comes here and goes up to the top, it has both a height and a velocity. It's still moving. So we're going to use conservation of energy again. There are no external forces, so the work will go out. That's equal to zero. And this time, there's two forms of energy at the top of the loop. We have GPE and KE. So we have our initial energy is GPE up the ramp. We're going to call that ramp now. Could have called it incline, but for some reason I changed it to ramp. And that's going to equal the final energy, which is the kinetic energy at the top of the loop, and the GPE at the top of the loop. So we have GPE ramp is KE at the top of the loop plus GPE at the top of the loop. Find the velocity of the block at the top of the loop. The first trick we have to avoid, or trap for that matter, is the height of the loop. We were given the radius of the loop, but don't use that, because how high is this guy? The block is twice the radius. It's the diameter of that loop. So we have to substitute two times our loop in for h. So here's our conservation of energy equation. And like we just said, 
we substitute 2r loop in for h loop. Now, what do you notice about the equation? It has m's in every single uh, expression there, so we cancel out the m's, and we have this. Now, we're going to subtract g times 2r loop from both sides, so we get everybody with g on the same side here. Now, we're trying to solve for velocity, so we're going to switch sides. So we have 1 half velocity squared loop is equal to gh minus g times 2 times r loop. Can I do anything? Yeah, you always like to factor. It reduces the amount of multiplication you do. So we take the g out in front. We then multiply both sides by 2 to clear that 1 half. And finally, take the square root of v squared, and this is our expression that we will plug numbers into. And here is why algebra is so beautiful when you work with physics. We found that the velocity at the top of the loop is this expression here. Doesn't that look familiar? Here's the velocity of the block at the bottom of the loop. We have height here. That's the height of the incline. That's this right over here. That's the height there. And we have height here also. But what's different about the top of the loop? Well, we subtract out this distance here. Okay, so we're actually finding the difference in potential energy between the top of the incline and the top of the loop. And where does that GPE go into? It goes into kinetic energy and velocity. So we've replaced H with H minus 2R with this term here, right? Okay, let me just be a little clearer. Here's 2R. This whole height here is H. So this piece, which is the difference in height between the top of the circle and the top of the incline is h minus 2r, which is that equation there. So now, finally, we've done all the interesting work. Now it's kind of anticlimactic. We just put the numbers in, make sure you do the math right, get the units, and velocity at the top of the loop is 3.96 meters per second. When the box is at the top of the loop here, some of the energy is in the form of kinetic energy plus GPE. That means all the initial energy here did not just go into the kinetic energy like it did when they were at the bottom of the loop. That means the kinetic energy up here is less than the kinetic energy at the bottom. And that, that got proved out by our calculations. The top of the loop, the box's velocity, was 3.96 meters per second, while at the bottom it was 4.64 meters per second. What is the normal force on the block at the bottom of the loop? Once you hear force, we're into dynamics. Once you're into dynamics, you're into a free body diagram. The box is experienced circular motion. It's going around the loop. And since it is still in the loop, we will need to consider what? Centripetal acceleration, not linear. So here's our free body diagram right over here. At the bottom, you've got gravity pulling you down. The normal force is pointing up opposite gravity, and the acceleration is in the up direction because the acceleration always points towards the center of the circle. So if you're at the bottom of the circle, the acceleration points up. Newton, sum of the forces is ma. We have a positive sign for normal because it's up, negative for mg because it's down, and positive for ma because it's up. And since we're in circular motion, the acceleration is v squared over r, where v is the velocity at the bottom of the loop. So we have normal minus mg is mv squared bottom over r. Let's do the algebra. And notice, we didn't put the sketch on this slide. It's not just to save space, but it's to just show the importance of once we have the free body diagram, we don't care what it looks like. Well, we care what the free body diagram looks like. We don't care what the sketch looks like anymore. So we have our normal minus mg is mv squared over r, where v is v bottom. We add mg to both sides. That's this step here. And once again, let's factor m out so we can do less multiplication at the end. And we have m times g plus v squared over r. We're given m. Here's one of our constants, g, 9.8 meters per second squared. Here's the velocity that we calculated earlier in part b. And here's the radius. So now we actually use the radius of the loop, not the diameter. We don't have to double it here. And we get a normal force of 53.7 newtons. Part E. What is the normal force on the block at the top of the loop that's over here? 
So we start by writing Newton's second law equation for centripetal acceleration for the box at the top of the loop. And to do that, we need a free body diagram. So we have two forces acting on the block up there, gravity pulling it down. And also, you can see how it's hopefully you can see underneath the loop there. So the normal force is pushing down on it. So here's our two forces. And since the normal and gravitational forces point down, as well as the acceleration, we draw that here too, just so we know what we're doing with the signs, all values will be negative. So we sum the forces, and that will equal mv squared over r. And make sure you put top there so we don't lose track of which velocity we're talking about. So the two forces both point down. They're both negative. Negative normal force minus mg equals negative mv squared over r. And that's the acceleration right here, the centripetal acceleration, and it's pointing down, so it's negative. We have our equation from the previous slide over here, and we want to solve that for v top. Okay, always solve algebraically first before you put any numbers in. So first thing we do, we multiply by negative one, and we now have a positive for the normal and the mg, and positive for our centripetal force. Subtract mg from both sides. So this will wind up over here, and that's what we have here. Factor out the m, and we have m times minus g plus v squared top over r. And again, we keep this so we make sure we use the top velocity, not the bottom velocity. And finally, we substitute in our numbers, and we calculated this v top in part c, so we put that there. Here's our g, here's the radius of the loop, here's the mass, carry out the math, and we get the normal force is 33.2 newtons.